Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are the Corinthian Baptist Church of Germantown, located at 6113 North 21st Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19138, serving the community for 120 years. Again, we congratulate and we welcome our pastor-elect, Reverend Robert Solomon, as well as his wife, Mrs. Solomon, First Lady. We can be found on Facebook at Corinthian Baptist Church of Germantown, as well as YouTube at Corinthian Baptist Purple Circle with the letter C in the center. Now, we welcome Mrs. Catherine Jetter, who will bring us the Missionaries Mission Report from Have Christ Will Travel Ministries. Good morning. This is Fifth Sunday, and we're going to give a mission challenge. And praise the Lord for the opportunity and the privilege to share. The Lord has been good to us. And God is gracious and merciful to us each day. All that we that are on the line that hears this message can agree that the world is in despair and it needs people who care. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 as, as a disciple of Jesus, we should be obedient to his word in the year 2021. Sharing the word of God's salvation and love, Jesus' love and his salvation. The world needs <clears throat> to understand that Jesus is speaking <clears throat> through the happenings around the world. All should respond to the circumstances, turn from their wicked ways and turn to Jesus. Look around and look and listen to the television and listen to the radio and read the newspapers. Jesus is the answer. It says in Matthew 28, 18, that Jesus has all power in heaven and in earth. And he says in Matthew 28, 19, a commandment, go ye into all the nations. Yes, the people need to hear the good news. They need to know that Jesus loves them. And that is the way to go. At this time, we're asking you to please pray about what you can do at this time. Our mission, have Christ Will Travel Ministries and other missions have um, connections, can help people, feed people, and help with medical um, missions in other parts of the world. Your prayers and your giving will make a difference now, a great difference now. A world in despair needs people who care. John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16. Do you care? Jesus loves you. Good morning, Corinthian Baptist Church family and friends. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And we thank you for joining with us this morning as we come together and worship to glorify and honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Just a few announcements uh, this morning. 
want to once again thank everyone for your stewardship and tithes and offering. We thank you so very much for your stewardship and your tithes and offerings. Uh, also, just like to remind everyone about the food giveaway on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Uh, at the building next to the parking lot here at the church. That's every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Uh, at giving away uh, at the build from the building next to the parking lot. A free food giveaway. Just want to remind everyone uh, about that giveaway. There's also a food giveaway at the Upper Room Baptist Church. Uh, on Mondays and Tuesdays is at 10 a.m. On Wednesdays is 8.30. On Thursdays is 9 a.m. And Fridays is at 9 a.m. Again, that's the Upper Room Baptist Church located at 7236 Old Guns Avenue. Monday and Tuesdays, food giveaway is at 10 a.m. On Wednesdays, it's, from, it's at 8.30. Thursdays is at 9 a.m. And Fridays is at 9 a.m. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Corinthian, and welcome to our service on the day before Memorial Day, the official beginning of summer unofficial beginning of summer. It is also dedicated to the service men and women who gave their lives for our country. And it's also a time to remember those, uh, those loved ones who have passed. Celebrate joyfully at the barbecue at Brother Coley's backyard, but remember to be safe, wear your mask, and have a blessed and wonderful day. Father, I just want to thank you. Thank you for allowing us to see a day we've never seen before. And Lord, through this day, I ask that you guide us, 
through it, dear Lord, and allow everything that we do say and react to be pleasing in your sight. Dear Lord, I just ask a special blessing upon Corinthian Baptist Church, dear Lord. I want to thank you, dear Lord, for Corinthian Baptist Church of Germantown. Lord, I want to thank you for the under-shepherd that you have sent to Corinthian. Lord, help us be the church that you would have us to be. Lord, help us to realize that we have a leader now and help us to follow that leader that you have placed before us. And dear Lord, I ask a special blessing of all those that have lost loved ones, not only in Corinthian, not only in the United States, but around the world, dear Lord. I ask that you comfort each and every one of them, dear Lord, as only you can, and give them the solace to know that their loved one is with you. And dear Lord, I just thank you for everything. I thank you for all that you've done for us, all that you're doing for us, and all that you're going to do for us, dear Lord. I ask all of these petitions and blessings in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. For our scripture reading this morning, our scripture reading comes from Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses 10 through 20. Again, our scripture reading for this morning comes from Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses 10 through 20. God's holy and righteous word. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet showed with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me. That I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an, an, I am an ambassador in bonds. That therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. That was Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses 10 through 20. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise your holy and righteous name. We thank you for this day, Father God. We thank you for your word, Father. We thank you for the many blessings, Father God, that you continue to pour upon us, Father God. Father God, be with families, Father God, that have loved ones that have transitioned on, Father God. Be with them, Father God. Give them comfort and give them peace as they remember their loved ones. Be with Brother Marvin, the recent passing of his loved one, his family member. Be with him, Father God. Father God, we thank you for keeping us in this midst of this 
virus, Father God, as it has touched so many people, so many families, Father God. Father God, we, we ask, Father, that please, Father, just be with us as we deal with this virus, that we deal with sickness, homelessness, those that may need clothes, Father. We thank you this morning, Father God. We thank you for your love. We love you, Father God. This morning we say thank you, Father. In the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. Greetings. I'm wearing a mask, but I know times are changing. But on my mask it says, acceptance is contagious. Greetings, Corinthian Baptist Church. Those who are visiting, members, and those in the pulpit, the deacon, the trustees, and all those who make up the Corinthian family. Beloved, I'm grateful for the opportunity to share a word from God to you on this fifth Sunday. Times are changing, and some people say God moves in mysterious ways, but I say God moves in deliberate ways, and deliberately we are moving forward. So thank you once again for the opportunity to uh, be in this uh, arena, this pulpit, to share what God has touched upon me. I would bring you salutations from Have Christ Will Travel Ministries. We are so blessed by the support that you provide over the years, and we don't take it for granted. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We are so blessed by the support that allows Have Christ Will Travel to be a conduit, a facilitator, and a light to project the gospel beyond our territory here to the global, to the world, to those who are lost, and to help those to continue in their walk and being victorious. I bring also salutations from Mother Jetter. You probably heard her earlier, but she is a, a, a solid member here and she sends her uh, love and also her prayers. And then also from my wife, Alicia, and also overall the Jetter family and all of us that have Christ will Travel Ministries. So thank you once again, and may you continue to be blessed through these times. My text for today is Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 18. But let us pray. Lord, thank you for allowing us to be here for another opportunity to hear a word that has come from up high from you through your messenger to those people of God. So Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable as I present and project and proclaim the gospel and the word that you have brought to me through me for those to hear. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As I was stating, our text for today is Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. So let me read it from the King James Version. As it states, Finally, my brethren, and this is from Apostle Paul, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, 
that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take upon you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil days, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, have your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fire, fire, fierce darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always. I'm going to put emphasis on that. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. The title of this discussion today is called Effective Prayer and Vital Byproducts, such as Someone Who Leads. Earlier in chapter 16, Apostle Paul said so much about how to live in the relationships of a kingdom husband, a kingdom wife, a kingdom children, and also heaven on our jobs. How to bring spiritual heaven on our jobs. But Paul wants to emphasize that people are not only our ultimate problem, but humanity, true struggle, is not against flesh and blood, but against evil, spiritual forces that are in the heavens and that are about the earth. What we call spiritual warfare is a conflict in a spiritual realm that affects the physical realm. The daily problems, trials, tribulations, shortcomings, along with the overcomings, are rooted there. Thus, beloved, importantly, the resources you need to fight the battle are there too. The battles that Christians and the deceit that the unchristians face every day are rooted in the schemes of the devil. That's in verse 11. And guess what? The devil's forces, whether they be a spirit that manifests itself in a way that it come forth in people, or whether other activities or situations happen, they know your history. They know your weak spots. And they know your sin pattern. Their goal is to keep you from experiencing God's will for your life, which has a direct link to not just you, but a direct link to the well-being and even the salvation of others. So in a nutshell, missions, whether and wherever or whatever field you're in, whatever highways and byways you travel, or whatever garden God has planted you, you then have to be equipped and ready to fight the spiritual with the spiritual. Your human strength will not be able to work through and defeat. Your hope is to be strengthened by the Lord and to put on the full armor of God. Through the cross and the resurrection of Christ, victory is already won. The devil and his forces have lost. The only power the devil or his forces have 
is the power that you give them. That's why Paul states, we are to stand firm in Christ's victory. It's the same thing as a lot of these sports teams. You may not have played the game, but you stand in the victory of that team. And you put out your chest as a fan and say, we did it. Same thing. We have already won through Christ. And that's the strength and the might that you stand on when you faced the attacks that come from the spiritual realm that show up in the physical realm here. So you might say, well, preacher, how am I to stand? Well, Paul tells the Ephesians and us and others who are to come when they read the Bible to stand. Now he puts it out there in verse 11. He puts it out there in verse 13 through 14. And he says it in verse 10. Stand. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now we stand in, on, and through the power and the strength of God. And who he is. That's where you get your strength. Or you walk in the strength of God. And here's the real point. Your relationship with God. The devil can't stop you. Now, you can have all the ministries you want, and ministry is good, but it's your personal relationship. As it gets stronger, that is what the devil, the enemy, is trying to defeat. That's what he's trying to undercut. Because when your personal relationship with God gets stronger, when it grows, a byproduct is, your light will shine brighter. Your testimony will be more out there. You will be bolder and be able to speak the gospel to those who are lost and help those who are in the body of Christ to grow and mature. That's why you should be concerned and focused about your relationship with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And guess what? The enemy's trade craft, they're looking for methods and ways to target, ways to stop, stuff, stall, and stuff your walk with the Trinity. So definitely you want to be able to grow your personal relationship and then the ministry will be the byproduct and then it will all come together within the will of God. But you need to stand. Now, fortunately, I've done a lot of studying. And it was always nice when the professor would foot stomp something and say, okay, I'll give you a lot of material, but let me foot stomp for the test. So you'll now go, oh, let me focus a little bit more on this particular item when I'm studying, so I'm ready for it when the test comes. So Paul does this for us in Ephesians verse 12, when he kind of puts out the four areas of where you will be having combat. Principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. So now, just follow me here as I kind of lay out this, this, this one point. This relationship that we have with God it goes vertical. But there's also a relationship that goes horizontal. And with us here in the body of Christ, that's where I can explain some of this power. When you're in the combat of these particular four areas. Now, principalities. That's, that's, that's you know, on a hierarchy. You know, I used to think, Principalities. Well, how does this play out? And you, and you can see, like in Daniel, when he talks about some um, uh, situation where uh, an angel was supposed to get through, the, but he was held up because a principality was kind of stopping this one angel and he had to uh, deal with this. And, and, and that gets into some of that, um, we'll say, deep theology. But 
bringing us back. A principality for us here. That's that apostolic ministry, which Apostle Paul was doing, where you're kind of called into regions where there are no churches, and you establish the gospel, and you set up churches. So those individuals, they have certain authority, I mean, even miraculous power, that they can walk into these principalities, because guess what? The principalities has that demonic forces there, that they are strong, but they also need to be countered with the power of God. So Paul used to walk in, not used to, Paul, all his churches, Ephesians, Corinthians, Galatians, there weren't churches there, but he walked in with the power and he set up churches. And that's where you hear these, 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 these letters to them to continuously to encourage them and to also address some of the ongoing issues and the attacks that came from those principalities. But as I put it, the apostolic ministry deals with these types of powers. But then the evangelistic ministry, they maintain the gospel. And that's that link which you see us out there and projecting and doing outreach and evangelism. But then here's the next link. It spreads through the pastor and the church. And the pastor encourages and builds the church and builds the body. So then that link moves forward and is made plain, meaning the gospel, by the teacher. Sunday school. That's why it's important to get to the youth when it's young. That's why it's good to have those youth programs. That's why it's even good to have... Sunday school, even for us who are mature, because that is making it plain and that's a link. And then the intrinsic link is that foretold and is strengthened by the prophetic. Saints, here's the keynote. So when all those links and those chains in our network among the Christian come together and work together, the body, whether they're outside and lost or the body inside, it's delivered, you're unified. And when we have a complete effort to get the gospel out and maintain it and spread it into our region and beyond, that's where our power from God. And then it comes among us as we are unified and moving forward. Now, I'm talking about power. But, you know, all that power that I'm talking about, there's horizontal and vertical when you have that good relationship. All that power, all that anointing, all those blessings from God are stored in God. Now, you was born again, you who are saved, had power in the spiritual realm, and you're able to bring it to the earthly realm. And that's where the tool, the method is prayer. 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 I've always seen prayer as a part of my household because I grew up in the household of the late Reverend Dr. Jetter and Sister Catherine Jetter. And that was always one of the first things they went to. You know, everything might be spinning around, but prayer was what they made certain we understood was the first step in the journey to come, whether it was going to be difficult, easy, or whatever may come, prayer was the first step. And Paul puts it out here, prayer. In fact, prayer even gets cited in Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Talks about making request. And that brings out the power in the speech and creative power. And when they all work simultaneously with the spiritual gift that we all have been given when you accept Christ. It all brings it together. But then you have that armor. God intervenes when we ask for help. And how do you ask for that help? Prayer. Paul provides discussion about the armor through verses 14 through 17. But if you ever took note at verse 17... It doesn't end with a period. It has a colon. 
So Paul, in a sense, is trying to tell you, I'm not done yet. Don't end your thoughts there. In fact, right after that colon, he says in verse 18, pray, praying always, prayer. So Paul dovetails prayer at this point to say the armor is all that he puts out in the other verses, but it all gets energized with prayer. Now, prayer is a divine means of putting on our spiritual armor, which is a reflection of the person and the work of Jesus Christ on our behalf. A Christian spiritual resource and all those resources are accessed through relational communication with God. So how often should prayer be offered? At all times. And with all perseverance and intercession for all the saints, prayer must be woven into all of life. We need to stay in regular communication with God and pray in the spirit in order to access heaven's authority for intervention on earth. Um, my recollection or my example is I always had a prayer line to my parents. When I was in school, when I was in the military, when I was going through anything, even now I can pick up that phone and have that communication. That is what prayer is. That is what prayer is for you, the saints. That is a way that you are continuously in connection with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, we're always going to be under some pressures, and that's where you always should be praying. In other words, we must be on the same page as the Spirit, utilizing spiritual wisdom. The most powerful way to do that is to pray God's Word God's word back to him and apply to your situation. And the proof of God moving is the loving of God and loving people. So if you do not love people, you don't love me. That's what God could say. But when you show the love of Christ and you are in communication and prayer and you are applying the word, you are going to be able to tap into that power and project and proclaim and project the gospel to those who are lost. And also through these situations, which the armor kind of uh, simultaneously brings out, you're going to be able to stand. So 13 says, wherefore take unto you to say, Partially the armor, semi-partially armor, says the whole armor that God may be able to be with you and that you will be able to withstand the battle. Now, this is just to remind yourself that you've already won because the victory is in Jesus. The armor is just designed to help you to stand. So do not stop standing. As I was saying, the armor and the pieces kind of relate what areas the devil will attack. So verse 14 through 17 kind of lay those out. So let me kind of uh, um, synopsize some things on that. So one, the devil and the people of the devil are going to lie to, to you because they're aiming at your mind. You're aiming at the lie structure of the human being. And that is your mind. You will need to gird it up with truth. So when you have the truth of the word and the truth of God, when you hear those things that, uh, we'll say lies, in terms of you're no good or you're this or that, you got to go back and put your faith into the trust and knowledge. And that's why having your constant, uh, we'll say, mind in the word at some point will allow you to know what is a truth, 
versus what is a lie and the devil and the people of the devil are going to be trying to get to that. And that's where you're girded up with truth. But then the devil's going to also come at your emotions, your heart. And that's why the breastplate of righteousness is so important. Because if you look at the majority of the individuals in the Bible, they couldn't allow their emotions to get in the way of some of the things that were requested or required of them. Because at that point, that's where the devil will take them out. So I'm not saying you can't have emotions. Because God made that as part of us to be human. But there is a way when you put on that breastplate of righteousness that you will not allow the devil to come at you in emotions and allow him to stall you, take you out, um, prevent you from being the role model or be the Christian or be that light to, to those who need to hear the gospel. The devil also wants to attack you where you travel. But everywhere you go, you should be leaving peace. That's why the shoe of peace is, is laid out here in the verse and in the description of the armor. So peace is something you should be, if it ain't peaceful when you walk in, in terms of gossiping or slander or backbiting or anxiety and frustration, when you walk in those type of situation, when you leave, it should be peace. Because beautiful is the feet of those who publish the gospel. And that's why you also need to have that shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. But in addition, Paul admonishes us, once again, pray. So, verse 18, pray always. And the final piece of the armor is watching. So watching means be cognizant of how things are moving around. So you pray and you watch. And when you bring these together, they energize that armor and then you're ready to use it for whatever piece is applicable to the situation. But you know, prayer, you must have an understanding when it comes to effective prayer that you need to make certain there's some things in the right, uh, we'll say, lineup in order for it to go well or for it to have effectiveness. You need to have a clean heart. Um, we are always dealing with things here and there and, and, uh, and the world of flesh and the devil can always seep in. But if you have a, a clean heart, that allows your prayer to be effective. You need to get beyond the agenda and when you're outside your prayer closet and there is a corporate prayer and uh, you know you do not want to be disruptive in terms of bringing in the wrong attitude. And then prayer is designed to open the will of God. I mean just a simple prayer. Father encourage them as you know how. These kind of things kind of lift up prayer in a way that it becomes more effective and effectual. And then also the unity and harmony of what God wants. We pray for a lot of things and they even make jokes, you know, um, in the, in the world about, Ooh, I pray for this and that, but you know, let your will be done. Or if the Lord wills, these are things that kind of align what God wants versus what we want because prayer gets intercepted by stuffs. So when you go to prayer, you're praying for what you may want and you may not even know that is the will of God. But the blessings and, and sometimes blessings come with a little difficulty with them. But if God gave it to you, then he's gonna make sure you're gonna be able to withstand and not worry about it. I can recall stories of the headquarters over in church, on Church Street, um, Church Lane, with Have Christ to Travel Ministries. When we were looking to move and expand, 
and we were blessed with the dwellings, the property that we have now. But you know, it came with a mortgage. But once again, my mother and my father will tell the story of how they prayed. And you know, the Lord paid off that mortgage in one year. So when you are praying and you are in the will of God and letting the will of God connect, you don't have to worry. Now, you can think about it, but you don't have to worry because God will come through. Because prayer is designed to release God into your world, so you don't have to worry. In fact, you actually should be rejoicing, like it says in Philippians 4. And rejoicing always. In fact, it says it twice. Rejoice always, and again I say rejoice. And yet it also moves on to say, live in moderation and be careful for nothing. So, don't worry. That's actually a decision that you can make. Don't worry. Let your requests be known. So trust God and get his direction so the peace of God can settle in. And look for a reason to honor him and submit to God's will so it can be done. Why do you think or who do you think about when you hear the word mentor? Well, for me, it's Catherine Jetter and the late Reverend Dr. Joseph Jetter Sr. They saw my potential. In fact, they, my father let you know, they named me before I was even born because they knew I was going to be doing something for Christ. Just like all have a burden once they become saved. But they saw that before me. They claimed it because God spoke to them and they claimed it and they believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. They modeled how to lead by serving in humility, faith, and love. As a result, I am now serving God by mentoring others, whether it's in the body of Christ or when I project the gospel to those who are lost. And I am trying to make disciples. Like I said, it's like a form of mentoring. Those inside the body of Christ and those unbelievers outside the body of Christ. A biblical example would be the prophet Elijah played a critical role in Elisha's growth as a leader. Elijah found him, Elisha, plowing in a field and invited him to be his protege after God told him to anoint Elisha as his successor. That's in Kings chapter 19, 16, 19. The young mentee watched his mentor perform incredible miracles and obey God no matter what. God used Elijah to prepare Elisha for a lifetime in ministry. Towards the ends of Elijah's life, Elisha had the opportunity to leave. Instead, he continued to renew his commitment to his mentor. Three times Elijah offered to release Elisha from his duties. And yet each time he refused, saying, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. As a result of Elisha's faithfulness, he too was used by God in extraordinary ways. We all need someone who will model what it means to follow Jesus. May God give us godly men and women who help us to grow spiritually. And also, may he touch upon the hearts and souls and the minds of those to move beyond and reach out to those who are lost. Even if they are a living testimony, even if it's just to give that word of encouragement or some way of showing kindness or generosity to those who are in need, that speaks volumes and it also shows the love of Christ. And it may prick their hearts or their minds to find out more. But God has supplied you. And through prayer, you can tap into that power. The power of the Spirit to invest our lives in others inside the body of Christ and definitely to those unbelievers outside the body of Christ. Let us close. Prayer is designed to get a response from the prayer reading. You are the prayer. 
looking for a response from the prayee. But your father knows what you need. And that's normally not a temporal thing. I'd rather have God's choice for five years than to have a choice that I want for 25 years because our choices are made with a natural, foolish heart. But God's choices are made with love and mercy. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, help us to build into other lives the gospel and to utilize prayer as a weapon, prayer as a comfort, prayer as an instruction, prayer as a guide, prayer as a key, and prayer as a connection, but ultimately prayer to bring us to a place where you want us to be. Let us pray. Help us, Father, and I pray you draw people to Jesus like a mentor draws a mentee in the right way. May the Spirit draw men, women, boys, and girls to the body of Jesus, saving the souls and loosening souls who are in captivity to be free. And we pray you will intervene into the affairs of men and women and touch and bring peace in our world and allow Corinthian Baptist Church and us in the body of Christ to be lighthouses in this community, in the world. And let them know that God is supreme and Jesus is Lord. I would be remiss if I didn't send out an invitation. If you desire to give your heart to Jesus, and you want him and you're willing to put away your past, and he is willing to accept you and forget your past and wash you clean, of all those sins and make you his child. He wants you. And it's a simple prayer. It's Jesus, I'm a sinner, but I want to have you cleanse me. I want you to come into my life. I want you to be my savior. Forgive me for my sins and accept me into your heart as my savior. It's a simple prayer. So, I leave you today, and hopefully if you have accepted Christ and you said that prayer, you will get in touch with one of the members here, and they can follow up with you. But don't let this opportunity pass you. And for those who are walking and continuing to try to walk victorious, prayer, 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 prayer. Amen, amen. And amen. We're so thankful you shared in our worship experience this morning. We know you were blessed by the message that came from Reverend Paul Jetter. We invite you to come back again next week at the same time where we study and learn more about the Word of God. In the meantime, be blessed, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.